What's up, LC? Welcome to your fourth installment of Tribe TV. I'm Zach Cattell. And I'm Taylor Zazowski. Let's get into this. Let's take a look at a club called WISE here at Lake Central. Hi, I'm Delaney McGrath. Um, I'm a senior and I'm co-president of WISE. I'm Paige Cavalli. I'm one of the co-presidents for WISE this year. Basically in WISE we have people come in, um, uh, women come in, talk about like their college experiences, uh, what they're studying, what they want to be, and you can um, ask like as many questions you want, um, just kind of get their side of everything. Um, we also go to Taylor, Grimmer, and Clark for science days and we have like all the middle schoolers come and do like experiments with us and uh, it's really cool to see them you know asking questions and they're like oh I'm excited to come to high school and really join this club it's really cool. Um, I'm in this club because it's a great way to listen to guest speakers come in and talk about why they chose the career they did how they became successful and get a good idea of what I might want to do in the future. So, we have guest speakers come in and talk about where, what they do, um, why they chose it, what college they went to, and just they give us tips on how to be a successful woman in a STEM field. Um, we also do science days at the middle schools um, where we go in and do different science experiments for the middle schoolers there and we do stuff with dry ice, um, an experiment called elephant toothpaste, and um, steel wool. My favorite part is going to the science days because it's really cool to see the 7th or 8th graders get really excited about science and it's really interesting um, to get back to the high school and have kids come up and say, oh I remember when you came to our middle school and that's why I'm interested in joining WISE now. My favorite part of WISE is just hearing um, the middle schoolers uh, come in and just tell me like, hey, like I remember you coming in and uh, doing experiments and I really want to be a part and I think that's just really cool and just going to the different middle schools and doing all these experiments. Our first science day is September 21st at Grimmer and our first speaker coming in is October 8th. So uh, come to, or go to see Mr. Smith in C321 and get a membership form and join the club. Wow, that video is really informational. I'm kind of thinking about joining. I'm glad you thought that. It's fall, so let's go take a look at County Line Orchard. Hi, my name is Doris Stavon Thorne. I am the ambassador for County Line Orchard. I've been here 17 years. Uh, when you come here, I'm the one that you will meet at the Double Doors. Um, this year I have a new title. I work for County Line Orchard and I am the Queen Bee. So, um, so I am the one that welcomes you here. We have uh, Honey Crisp. This is our first year of having Honey Crisp Fest. So we would love to see you come and enjoy our apples, our fudge, pies, donuts. We gotta have, gotta have donuts to come here. And um, we're here till Halloween. I work for some pretty great people. They have me back every year. I'm 80 and I have a job. Now where else can I, I'm the oldest one here I think. I don't think there's anybody any older. So come and uh, visit us at County Line Orchard. We have Kids Farm, we have um, pumpkin, uh, pumpkin Patch, lots of good things. I don't know about you, but that last video made me pretty excited for the Apple Orchard this year. Yeah, me too. But let's check out what the presentations that have been going on this week are all about. My name is 
is Sarah Castaneda and I'm the Director of Secondary Education. Senate Bill 355 was passed going to effect this year on July 1st and basically it states that all students in grades K through 12 need to have personal safety education provided by the schools and it has to be completed by winter break. Um, so the curriculum entails uh, talking about uh, personal relationships and how to set healthy boundaries. Um, there's a component of it that talks about abuse and neglect as well. The state has approved several organizations throughout Indiana to provide the instruction and so Fairhaven, which is a Northwest Indiana group, is an approved vendor for the curriculum. So they've been coming in and talking with students um, at all of the middle schools as well as the high school um, about the personal safety topics. Um, and they've been trying to cover some of the basic ways where students can get themselves into a compromising situation. Hi, my name is Lanisha, also known as Nisha um, from Fairhaven. Hi, I'm Shanna Robertson. I'm Ms. Shanna, the Education Outreach Coordinator. And we work at Fairhaven, which is Lake County's Rape Crisis Center. And we wanted to be a part of uh, Bill 355, which is also known as Aaron's Law, which is education for students, grades K through 12, about sexual abuse education and awareness. So we are presenting the Teen Norse curriculum here at Lake Central High School, um, talking about healthy versus unhealthy relationships, uh, child luring, grooming tactics that are used, uh, and we're speaking about a couple of lures um, that predators might use to trick a child into an unsafe situation, and those are the e-lure, the affection lure, and the authority lure. If you or anyone you know are struggling with any of the topics discussed in this video, text the crisis text line at 741-741. Text HOME. If you're wondering what to wear to homecoming, here's where some kids at LC are going. My name is Brianna Vader and I'm a sophomore. I'm excited for this year's homecoming because I didn't go last year and I heard it's really fun and I'm just excited to do that. Hi, I'm Carly Gibson and I'm a senior. I'm so excited for homecoming this year. I'm wearing this like navy, short, sparkly dress that I got from Windsor. I bought my dress at White Iris. It's blue and it's like tight up here and then it like poofs out. It's like blue and it's shiny and it's got like straps and like a strappy back. The styles that are in this year are like tight at the top and it flares out and it's a short dress. Every year for homecoming I feel like everybody gets either really super tight dresses or like the poofy ones that I get and I feel like it's more of the strappy backs are the style this year. Hi, I'm Connor Karich. Uh, I'm a junior at Lake Central. I'm excited for homecoming just because uh, you get to have fun with your friends and stuff. This is going to be the first time I'm going too, so pretty excited. I'm Dawson Cheney and I'm a senior. I'm excited for homecoming this year because it's my senior year and I've never been to homecoming, so this will be my first year. Uh, I'm going to wear like a dress shirt, dress pants, and probably a bow tie, and I got it from Dunhill. Uh, I got my shirt uh, and bow tie from Dunhill. Most guys will probably wear this, about the same thing, dress shirt and bow tie. I think most guys are probably going to be wearing something like similar to me, just like a button-up shirt and a bow tie. Wow, now I know exactly where to go and get my dress. Well, let's kick it over to Sports Update. Welcome to this week's Sports Update. I'm Javani Alcantar. And I'm Bailey Furman. Soccer team had a scoreless tie against Hammond Morton. Let's take a look at some highlights. The boys soccer team will travel to West Lafayette on Saturday to take on William Henry Harrison High School. The girls soccer team will travel to Concord High School at 11 a.m. on Saturday. We want to congratulate the girls golf team on winning DAC on Monday. We want to wish them the best of luck as they are competing in sectionals right now. Let's check out this year's team. 
Hi, I'm Danielle Colantuno, I'm a junior. And I'm Dominique Colantuno, I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Sarah Sanders, I'm a junior, and I'm on the girls' golf team. Hi, my name is Coach Gurnak, I coach the varsity girls' golf team here at Lake Central. Our goals for the season was to win DAC, which we ended up doing, and our next goals is to go to sectionals, win that, and win regionals, and then go to state. To win DAC was a lot of fun. It was our goal to win it outright, which we did. We put up some good scores, which made us overall champs. Well, we just uh, completed the DAC championship, which was obviously one of our goals this season. We finished 7-0 uh, in the regular season, and we took second at the DAC meet, uh, which gave us a 13-1 overall record, which was good enough for an outright DAC win. Um, a major difference from this year, from last year, was that Alexis is not here, and she was a big factor in our team. So now we're kind of here to fend for ourselves. Yeah, we lost Alexis, so obviously that was a huge void in our um, in our lineup. But our, our girls have done a really good job of filling that void. You know, Isabel Spanberg. Dominique Colantuno and Elena Lippi are now our seniors and they've done a good job of uh, kind of embracing this team and and you know winning without Alexis has been a very good accomplishment um, for our team and our program. I feel like we didn't have as high of expectations even though we are doing exactly what we needed to do. We kind of had a big part of our team leave and we were all very scared going into the season I think. And especially I was. I knew I needed to move up and fend for my team. Um, I think just as a team, we lost a lot of confidence, but we're starting to get it back, and I know it was very scary for me to have to take Alexis's place this year, but I think we're working out just as fine as we were before. Together, we play as a team pretty well. We practice and we're usually pretty focused. We hit the ball well as a team, and we usually do pretty well. Um, our mental game. It, golf is very challenging because after you have a bad hole, it's hard to come back. And as a team, if we improved that, we would be a lot better. I would like to improve my scores. It takes a lot of practice, so I'll just have to keep working on it. Yeah, I feel like we all feel a lot of pressure, but I feel like we're all very good at just letting it go and playing how we know how to play. A lot of people look up to us and think that we can't do anything because we lost our number one and they were really good and they just think that we're not going to be as successful. But when we come out here and become undefeated, a lot of people are being surprised by us. We're, being, we're, we're the underdogs right now. Yeah. <laughs> if you're interested in intramural volleyball, there will be a call-out meeting at the end of PTE on Tuesday, September 25th. See Mr. Gurnick if you have any questions. The boys tennis team beat Maryville 5-0 this past week. They'll play Ileana Christensen at home at 4:15. The football team fell to Crown Point last Friday but looked to bounce back at home against Laporte this Friday. Let's send it over to Jack Thiel for tonight's game preview. Hey guys, how's it going? Now what about Lake Central? For Lake Central, it's a really weird situation for them. They started the year 2-0 and they've lost two straight after that three and a half hour delay at Portage and did no offense at Crown Point. For Lake Central, what we could expect is I feel like we're going to see a run heavy by Sir Felix Garcia and see Zach Bundle drop back sometimes and go for the deep ball to Quincy Triple or Keyshawn Wrigley. Laporte comes in with a record of 1-3, Jack. What can they do to win tonight? I think what we can expect from Laporte tonight is a run-heavy offense. This team doesn't really have that many passing yards on the statistics board, but they do like to run the ball. They have two running backs with over 200 yards this year, so I really feel like it's going to be a rushing attack for the Slicers tonight. Lake Central started their season 2-0, but lost two straight games. How can they bounce back from this? Yeah, we talk about that Lake Central start. They went 2-0, and and now they're on a two-game losing streak. What they need to do is really pump up the offense. We've seen the defense. We think the defense is really good. But the offense has been really inconsistent, starting with 10 against Munster, 33 at Hammond Morton, and then 10 at Portage, and then 3 at Crown Point. We really got to see some consistency from this offense. And I really start. I really think it starts with Zach Bundelow in the offensive line because this offense really needs a surge if they want to win. Who has to be the key player for Lake Central tonight, Jack? Key player for Lake Central is Zach Bundelo. He, in my mind, had his worst game last week with only about, I think, over 60 passing yards. So I really feel like he's got to open a door for Lake Central tonight. He's really got to find his teammates, and he has to really get the touchdowns on the board tonight. Now, who do you think will win this game? For tonight's game, I have Lake Central winning. I think they'll win 28 to 10. I really feel like this defense is a really great group. And this offense, they need to wake up tonight because they have a hard matchup next week at Michigan City. So I feel like this offense will wake up tonight for a big game coming up next week. All right, thanks, Jack. Thanks, guys. Back to you guys. That's all we have for this sports update. I'm Javani Alcantar. And I'm Bailey Furman. Let's get back to Tribe TV. Thanks for the update, guys. Let's move on over to a feature about Jake the Long Kid. 
My name is Jacob Sullivan. A little bit about me, I actually have my own lawn care business as well as an active YouTube channel called Jake the Lawn Kid. And lawn care has been something that's pretty much been in my blood my entire life since I was like four years old. And then a couple years later when I turned nine, that's when my dad started making us do chores around the house and he said, hey Jake, I want you to start a cut in the yard. And I'm like, okay. And then as I, the, the more I did it, the more I began to enjoy it. Like I, I look forward to nothing more than coming home and being able to, to cut my yard. And then fast forward a couple years, I'm 13 years old, I'm talking to my dad, telling him, hey dude, you know, I love nothing more than mowing, I love mowing. And then he says, oh, you know, that's cool, and if you love it so much, why don't you try starting a lawn business and see how you like it? And I'm like, I'm all in for it, let's do it. And that first year, I picked up three lawns, and all I had was a push mower, a trimmer, and a handheld blower. After four years of printing out flyers and a little bit of word to mouth, I've grown from those three lawns to a, to a lawn tractor and a, a wagon to tow my equipment and I also have a couple more advancements. So what I started doing was investing my time in social media, specifically YouTube in the beginning and basically what I did was I, um, I taught homeowners the I would teach homeowners and small business owners the fundamentals to having a nice lawn you know and then at a certain point I decided to branch out but I branched out to other social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all of them. If you want to follow me on my social media, I'm sure these cool guys here at LCTV will leave it in the description below. Remember Jake the Long Kid on YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, all of it down in the description below. Over the years, not only have I learned that it's lawn care is something I love, but it's also it also gives me an opportunity to learn new things and make connections that are irreplaceable. Well, can't cut that kid out of my mind. Well, that's it for today, LC. I'm Taylor Zazowski. And I'm Zach Cattell. And that was your fourth installment of Tribe TV. We'll catch you next time.